In today's Gibbs Cam video, we're going to show you how to cut this manifold, as I have pictured here. Run into that quite often. Uh, round manifolds it can have a couple of ports or multiple ports, doesn't really matter. This one just has two different size ports on there. If we open the body bag, this is the stock I am starting with, and then I just have a shaft at the end in which to hold it on a four axis vertical mill or a live tooling lathe, either one. Let's put these back and open my tool palette. And the first tool I'm going to use is this two and a half inch face mill. And then to um, rough it out, I'm gonna use a half inch rough end mill and then a half inch ball end mill to finish the passes on here. So let's open up the cam. So the first operation I'm going to do is to face off the top of this to these uh, port uh, top faces on the port here. So let's just go to the home view here. And I did this freehanding, freehand, and as you can see, it's a little bit tilted the line, which would be really no difference. It would cut just fine, but let me show you how to uh, do a freehand toolpath. So I'm going to start over, just delete my line there. So in order to do freehand machining, of course, the uh, coordinate system has to be facing the screen. So by clicking on the home view, that's exactly what it does. Brings that to the face here. Open up your geometry palette. Click on line, mouse line, and then you click on the tool that you want to see. And you can see this is a half inch, half inch ball end mill, and then the two and a half. And as you drag it out from the tool menu, you will see a profile of the tool itself. So I'm going to leave the grid at like a hundred thou grid, invisible grid. And when that says Y0 up here, let me get a little bit closer there. I'm going to click once with my mouse, drag it across, look for uh, Y0 again. I don't need to go that far, just this far is really all I need to go. Click again, press escape to get out of there. And there is my line for facing off. Now I can leave it here, or if you prefer, you can go to force depth and move it up to that surface if you'd like. You don't have to, but you can if you'd like. So now let's run the path again. So let's open this back up and let's click on the line and it'll automatically bring the beginning and end. And let's just redo that. So now I have the tool path and if I go to the home view, you can see that's nice and straight now. So that's the first operation I'm going to do. The next one, I'm gonna use volume mill. So by using volume mill, I want it to look at the round stock. I don't want it to cut a lot of air. So in the body bag, in describing my stock, I'm just going to click on it and show the properties. You want to make sure it's set for stock, not stock display only. Stock display only shows you what the stock look like looks like when you go to render, but it does not use it for any toolpath calculation. But by clicking on stock, now Gibbs is looking that as actual stock and so the toolpath will look at the round stock and only cut where it needs to. So I'm just going to first just go down to the where almost the tangent point starts for these radiuses so I want to just do this in one cut and then the next operation I'm going to do is the rest of the way from where I left off down to a little bit past zero there. Now I'm going to click on the solids tab. Now everybody has volume mill solids now. If you have any kind of solids package in your Gibbs, then you automatically will have volume mill solids if you're on maintenance. So on here I said leave 50,000 stock on all the surfaces. So that's what it's going to do. So then I have my uh, roughing tool path. Then I'm going to do the same thing again, but on the bottom side, again, solids leave 50,000 stock. And I'm going to rotate 180, which is my coordinate system number two, which is the opposite way. If I go to here, this is my coordinate system two, which is basically upside down. So I have that toolpath there. So if we run just this so far, actually, let's go back to just OpSim. Sim. 
Now, of course, you could choose to have the rotate and cut at the same time if you want, but just because you can do it does not necessarily mean that might be the fastest way. So I figure this might be the fastest way just to clamp the part in the fourth axis and index by having it cut on the top, rotate 180, cut it on the bottom, and there's my roughing passes right there. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to use the 5-axis module, but I'm going to set it in 4-axis mode. So let me bring this over. Just general surface paths. I'm going to click on the drive surface, and you can see what's yellow here is the drive surface. I'm going to choose those here, click OK, and then I'm going to click on the tool axis control. Well, first let's go through these. So I'm going to do a zero on the um, direction and on the angle in Z, 90. If I click on the tool axis control, you can see I'm going to set it for four axis. You can set it for three, four, or five. But since it's a four axis vertical mill, I can't set it for five axis. So this will be four axis. Then it asks you the rotary axis, which is through X. And I'm going to click on this box that says point the tool to the rotary axis. Okay, gauge check, gouge check. Click on drive surfaces. I want it to look at the flute and the shaft. But then as I'm roughing this out, I don't want it to, uh, or doing the finish pass with the ball end mill, I don't want it to even touch these surfaces here because when I take a finish pass, I may have ugly little marks on there uh, from the tool path. So the first um, strategy I'm going to use is just to finish this and check all the drive surfaces. Now the next one is the uh, retract tool along the tool plane and I'm going to click on just check surfaces. If I click on here, you can see the only things that I have checked is the two islands there, two bosses in the top, and the fillets around the corner there. You can see it changes different colors when you click on them. And then that, I said, leave 20 thou of stock and a half thou tolerance. So it's going to go around here, finish this, but it's going to leave 20 thou on all this surfaces here. And I'm going to lead in, lead out. Just use the default lead in, lead out. No roughing here. And so if we run the rendering up to that point, here's the roughing again. Then we'll flip it upside down. Okay, now we're going to rough this out. So I just had the tool going around it this way as far as uh, uh, how it renders. Because it'll render a lot faster that way. And we'll kind of speed this up a little bit. We'll pause it and let it speed up and catch up. And now it's about finished there. So now it left 20,000 stock on the two bosses there. So the last two operations I want to do turn off the geometry there. About the same thing here as far as the tool path goes. Uh, not much has changed here except now I choose project curve. So I want to project this curve that's around the outside of here onto the part. So it says projection. Of course you click on the curve and the drive surface. Click on the drive surface. Click OK and then on the tool axis control, this time I'll just do three axis. So I'll just have it go around there because I want these bosses to stay straight up and not tilt. Uh, gouge check, same thing here, no second uh, strategy. Link, lead in, lead out, and roughing. I'm going to choose multiple passes. 
and four passes, 30 thou apart. And I want to do passes and not uh, step down. And as you can see, I have three different passes on here. If I kind of go to the top view, you can see it starts to go out past the uh, tangent point. And the same thing with the last operation. Same exact thing, just over on this larger boss here. So now if we render, we'll get up to this point and then we'll show you. And so now we're going to take the finish passes on these bosses. There's first, second, third, fourth, first, second, and third, and fourth. So now we have a nice, this one I did five, I guess. And we have a, a nice transition. Part looks good. You have your manifolds there. Then, of course, if you have the internals, you can do that as well. Now let's show you what it looks like uh, in machine sim. This was op sim. We'll show you what it looks like in an actual machine. So here is our four axis vertical mill. I'm just going to hide this uh, door on this left side here so we can see the rendering a little bit better. So I'm going to click on here, click this door, say hide it, and probably hide the tool changer as well. All right, now you can see this a little bit better. So I'll face it off. Then, of course, the volume mill solids. Speed this up a little bit. And of course, we're doing the backside now. And then we're going to do the finish operation. And we'll kind of speed that up a little bit. And it's about finished there. All right, now we'll slow it down a little bit and do the two bosses. First pass, second, third, fourth. This one we're doing five passes, I believe. Three, four, and one more. Oh, that was the fifth one there. So anyway, that is how you do it on a four axis vertical mill, or the same thing would apply if it was on a live tooling lathe uh, with or without a B axis on the upper head. Thank you for watching.